So I won't let her introduce herself <laughs> because I want the pleasure of introducing my colleague Delia Montesinos. So Delia, is, she's from uh, the Mexico-U.S. border, and she got her BA uh, with a major in Spanish from Trinity University in San Antonio, Texas. And then she lived in uh, Valencia and Castellón, Spain for 16 years. So if you hear her say vosotros, that's why. <laughs> Uh, she taught Spanish with the uh, Brownsville ISD for several years, and then she got a master's from the University of Texas Pan American. And later on, she received a PhD in Spanish literature from UT Austin, where she is currently a lecturer, senior lecturer, and she teaches uh, the Spanish heritage courses. And also, Delia is the author of the two textbooks that we use in our heritage courses here at UT. She has worked really hard to create this material, and um, she has a lot of experience working with heritage students, and so we have the pleasure of hearing her talk today about communicating ideas through language, a language arts and metalinguistic approach for teaching Spanish as a heritage language. Yeah. Well, since I'm from Brownsville, uh, the high school where I taught was International Boulevard. You get off the bridge and you go down, and there's the high school in La Porta, at Gladys Porter High School. That's where I taught. So it's a school that I would say is 99.9% .9 Hispanic. Eh? Uh, so yes, maybe I would have one or two students who weren't Hispanic, but that was very rare. My students were Hispanic students, um, and I loved it. But that's when I started learning a lot of things. I think most of us have learned our subject, not because we learned it at Trinity or UT or wherever, it's when you start teaching it that you really learn it. And um, I had the fortune of setting up the program for AP Spanish language in the district. And with AP students, you better know your language, eh? because they want to know the why of everything. And so that's, that's where I started from. And then when I taught the literature course, the AP literature course, I told myself, I would go to conferences and yo dije, yo sé lo mismo que estos profesores, ¿por qué no saco el doctorado? So I waited till my youngest graduated from college, and that's when it was my turn. And I came back as a mature student. <laughs> there were the younger ones, and then there was Delia, who was their grandmother. But fine, that's fine. Entonces, one thing that I have learned, I went to school way back, um, I'm from the border. I lived in Matamoros till I was eight, but I started school in Brownsville since the very beginning, first grade, Tipica. I went into the classroom with Mrs. Sherman, and my cousin and I were there. We didn't speak English. Nobody spoke Spanish. That was true immersion. Unfortunately, it was also the period of time when we were physically hit if we spoke Spanish at school. Eh? So that's an unfortunate thing that thank goodness doesn't happen physically, but there are other ways to demean our language. One of my students just told me this past semester, it's that my teacher told me I shouldn't speak Spanish because that was the language of the poor, ignorant people. So there are other ways to get to it. Pero nosotros estamos aquí porque vamos a cambiar todo ese mundo. Bien, entonces, yo fui a la escuela cuando language arts, todos lo reconocemos y todavía está ahí en la primaria, ¿verdad? Llegan las notas de los hijos, language arts, language arts, language arts. Perfecto. Pero luego seguíamos. Y en lo que es junior high, que es middle school ahora, Seguíamos con gramática y más gramática. Y luego en high school teníamos un semestre de literatura y un semestre de gramática. Y nos enseñaban cómo doblar cartas, cómo hacer un montón de cosas, cómo usar el registro de que era primero second person, then third person, then first person. Me and my friends, no way. It still turns my stomach when I hear students say, me and my friends are doing something. No, eh? no puedo. Y tuve la suerte de tener maestras muy buenas de inglés. Eh? 
excelentes. Y yo creo que eso me dio un cariño, por llamarlo así, hacia la gramática. Pero no solo fue en eso. Cuando llegaron mis hijos aquí, la mayor estaba en octavo y luego uno en séptico y luego otro en cuarto y en tercero, ellos no hablaban inglés. Fallo mío. Pero entraron en sus clases de ESL y los maestros se sorprendieron lo rápido que fueron aprendiendo. No son inteligentes como la mamá. <risa> son más. ¿eh? Pero yo creo que venían de España con una base gramatical súper fuerte. ¿eh? Y creo que eso les ayudó para entender y moverse en las dos lenguas. Por eso propongo language arts. ¿eh? Vamos a ver. <risa> 